There are three techniques in this layout that I'm going to cover in this video. The first is precision stamping with art crayons, the second is using a medium on the bat stamp, and the last is painting the wooden pumpkins. So these are art crayons from Vicki Booten, and what I like about this is that you can decide which portion of the stamp you want to be different colors, which is harder to do with ink. Now when you do this, you're going to spray water on it, which is what allows it to transfer, and it will be a watercolor effect. But I really like the way that that looked, and I was surprised by how those kind of more fine details of the stamp transferred pretty well. I had to experiment with how much water to add. You can see I added too much water on those. In the end, I sort of liked the look of a more mixed color. You can see I'm kind of coloring over the pink section with a little bit of purple and kind of mixing them a little bit more, and I like how that turned out. It felt like it was a fun color combination for Halloween. So then I just cut it out and put it right on the picture. For the bats, what I did was took some iridescent medium and mixed it with some black acrylic paint. I then took a palette knife and applied that mixture directly onto the stamp. Now I don't know if everybody's stamp is like this because mine actually had another little uh, imperfection in it, but when you're doing, when you're working with a medium this thick, it gets caught in the grooves of the stamp and you can see there that you can you can't really see the outline of the bat very well. So what I did was I took some precision scissors and I cut out the part there on the stamp that where the slope is not very steep and sort of catches a lot of the medium mixture and makes the image not transfer as clearly with this kind of thicker paste. And I found that made a really big difference. So I'm applying it here, and then I stamp it down, wait a while for it to dry, and then I'm going to cut it out. What I liked about this is that there was a little bit of a halo around the edges where the medium was thicker, and I liked the way that that looked. I suppose in the end, if you're going to cut it out anyway, it doesn't really matter if that part gathered there, but I thought that it was easier to kind of know where to cut when it was cut with more precision. So I'm taking a piece of plastic and stamping the bats on, and then when I apply, when I adhere the bats, I just adhere the middle so that they look like they're kind of flying off the page. Originally I was going to make it a see-through pocket, but the way the layout worked, that, that didn't work, so I put some um, polka dot transparency paper beneath them. For the pumpkins, I started by applying a layer of gesso. The pumpkins are pretty porous because they're unfinished wood, so I wasn't sure how applying mediums was going to work. I figured it was going to take a lot of layers, so I thought this would give me gesso as a primer, so I thought it would give me a nice base. And the faces gather some of the gesso in the middle, so you have to take a Q-tip or something else and kind of pull it out of their little faces. So the first thing I do is put some watercolor down and it's a watercolor brush from Vicki Boot and spray some water on it and then I just started dipping the pumpkins in it and then sort of rotating them around and watching the water flow and create some shading. The thing that was hardest for me about this, the thing that's hardest for me in general with mixed media is that I have to do a lot of waiting. Sometimes I sit down and I'm ready to craft but you have to wait a while for things to dry and set and I'm rather impatient so that made this hard at times. <laughs> So I just did a lot of experimenting. I tried things. I really disliked a lot of things. Whenever I made something that I didn't like, what I would do is take white paint and brayer it over the pumpkin and just basically start again. And sometimes that created kind of a cool background that you could kind of see the layer, whatever layer I didn't like, below it. Some of them, the first thing I did I loved, and some of them have like four or five layers. It's just a matter of playing around and kind of seeing what happens. In the end, I did a combination of watercolor, acrylic paint, and pigment ink, and then a white paint pen to create some dots as well. Oh, oh and also texture paint. You can see the stencil there to the right. I added some, I think I added texture paint, or maybe just regular paint over that. I wanted a really fine stencil to go over it because they're so small, and that Tim Holtz one worked really nicely because it has really small little circles. This is a scrap piece of paper that I use to just put all the extra color on, and sometimes the scrap paper that I use to clean up ends up being something that I really like and will use, and sometimes it, it doesn't. So Now I knew that I wanted to do both sides of these because I wanted to put them in a three by eight page protector 
where you could see through it and flip and see both sides of the pumpkins, which meant even more waiting because to decorate the other side, I had to wait for the one side to dry completely, which was hard. I also thought that these pumpkins would be fun if they pulled a lot. The photos that go with this layout are very colorful, and I wanted these pumpkins to kind of match those photos. So I pulled the, see, I didn't like the way that turned out at all. I pulled the photo in to kind of make sure that they were aligning somewhat with the colors of the photo. I think I end up just grayering all of those dots down because I thought it was a little bit much. I don't really remember. Again, it was just layer after layer after layer after layer because I just didn't know what I liked. Let's see what I do here. Yep, I brayer it. That's always a good go-to. That and a white, a coat of white paint for kind of starting over. So some white paint. I really liked the way that that looked. Just the few little dots. I think I did that on three different ones. And once I saw the white on there, I, I decided that I liked how it looked better than that sort of light pink. So yeah, I'm adding the white here. And I like the way that those three kind of look together. Oh, I must have missed some video here. So you can see I took some of the watercolor brush and put it directly onto the pumpkins to create some other tones there in the middle. I still haven't changed that purple pumpkin. <laughs> it's good that I did that because I still don't like it as I'm looking at this. You know, it's funny as I'm watching this, I'm noticing, I'm, I'm thinking about how intimidated I once was at the idea of doing something like this. Like the idea of kind of deciding where to put a certain color and, and paint something felt very like, oh, I couldn't do that. I'm not artistic enough. And I would really encourage you, if you are somebody who feels like that, to really try because I think you would surprise yourself. I know that I've surprised myself. I am in no way an expert in this at all. But it's fun to play and I've been surprised by the way that I've liked things that I've made. And I feel like I'm learning and kind of getting a sense of how to do some of this more unstructured type artwork, at least unstructured for the way my brain works. It, this is new for me, this idea of like shading and you know, I don't, I don't really know how to do stuff like that. But it's fun to try and to play and I've liked what I've done. Oh, sorry, this is blurry. I forgot to refocus it. And again, I think what's nice about it is you can always start over. <laughs> like with the purple pumpkin, I mean, that ends up being like a green color. So here I'm taking some, I forget what it's called, Ugh. iridescent medium or something like that from Vicky Booten. And it's got these really fun flakes of, of like shimmer. Vicky calls them unicorn tears. But they're really fun. And I love the way that they added to these pumpkins and especially the way they look through the page protectors. So there I just took some pigment ink, it's Vicky Booten Color Wheel pigment ink, and just put it on the pumpkins. It took a while to dry, but I really like how that looked. Oh, I didn't know that I changed that one. That's funny. I forgot that I did that. So I guess I put ink on that one as well. So there I'm just, yeah, I put a little watercolor on and then taking my finger and just kind of coloring over I just wanted there to be some kind of dimension and not to have the same color for the entire thing. I thought it looked a little bit more interesting. So I'm taking, what's that called? A dauber and putting some ink through the stencil there. It didn't create too much contrast. I'm trying to remember what I do here. Maybe I put white on it? I don't even remember. The yellow was a little too yellow, so I did the watercolor thing again here. But I'm taking a paint pen and just adding some dots because it was funny. I was like, I don't have to use this stencil because I was trying to get the dots exactly where I wanted them. And I was like, wait, I have a white paint pen. I can just, that's the kind of thing again where I'm like, oh, I wouldn't know how to do that. But as I've tried, I've surprised myself. I can do that. I can draw dots on something. So I would really encourage you if you are at all like, like I've been, not trusting yourself or not believing that you're able to do stuff like this. You can do it. This is doable. I'm confused by that purple pumpkin still. I guess I must have just brayered it and then added some white dots with the paint pen. I was originally going to put these in the two by two pocket squares, but I didn't, I'm trying to remember why I didn't do that. Oh, because I like the idea of them in a line straight down and I had five of them and there's only four of the squares. I considered putting some of the word strips, but 
Then I had the idea to see what would happen if I put them in a three by eight pocket page and then machine stitch around them. That did not work. However, I did take my fuse tool and I drew some messy circles around them. They, it did melt in certain parts, so it looks sort of janky, especially at the top. But I am like not a perfectionist about that kind of stuff, so I didn't care at all. I thought that it looked kind of fun. I really like how this turned out. It was super fun to make. I feel like I learned a lot, and it's just a happy, sparkly, fun layout that goes really nicely with the photos and the story that I was telling. I would encourage you to try this artistic stuff out. It's super fun, and you can do it.